welcome to Moving Medicine, a podcast by the American Medical Association. Today's episode is part of the Cannabis Education Series brought to you by the AMA Cannabis Task Force. I'm Dr. Jesse Ehrenfeld, Senior Associate Dean, Tenured Professor of Anesthesiology, and Director of the Advancing a Healthier Wisconsin Endowment at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I'm also the immediate past president of the AMA and co-chair of the AMA Cannabis Task Force. Michael, take it away. Thanks, Jesse. I'm Dr. Michael Sook, professor and chair of the Musculoskeletal Institute and the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Geisinger Health System. I'm chair of the AMA Board of Trustees and your co-chair of the AMA Cannabis Task Force. Through expert discussions and insights, this podcast series features information that can help physicians of all specialties understand cannabis and the health effects of cannabis use. The AMA forms mission-specific task forces like this one to tackle current medical issues in our nation. Make your voice heard by becoming a member today. Visit ama-assn.org slash more. And now, on to the show. Michael. Joining me today to talk about cannabis use and pregnancy is Dr. Tricia Wright. Tricia Wright is a professor of clinical medicine and medical director of maternal mental health and addiction medicine in the Department of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Health at the University of California, San Francisco, where she works both as an OB hospitalist and addiction medicine provider. Previously, she was at the University of Hawaii and founded the PATH Clinic, a perinatal clinic specializing in the care of pregnant and parenting women with substance use disorders. She is board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and addiction medicine and a fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, as well as being a distinguished fellow of the American Society of Addiction Medicine. She has published multiple papers on pregnancy and addiction as well as a textbook on opioid use disorders and pregnancy published in 2018 by Cambridge University Press. Dr. Wright completed her undergraduate degree in biological sciences from Stanford University, her MD from the University of Michigan, and she completed her residency in obstetrics and gynecology from the University of New Mexico and obtained a master's degree in clinical research from the University of Hawaii. Her research and clinical interests lie at the intersection of substance use disorders, mental health, and pregnancy. Dr. Wright, welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a great pleasure to meet you, and I'd like to start by discussing what we know about the epidemiology of cannabis use during pregnancy. Can you describe the trends of cannabis use while pregnant, and what are some of the reasons why a pregnant person might use cannabis that physicians should consider? Yes, um, definitely with the increased legalization of cannabis throughout the country, we know that 24 states plus the District of Columbia have fully legalized cannabis. With this increased legalization, we have seen that pregnant people and actually people in general, even when they're not pregnant, have increased their use. So we know in 2018 that almost 14% of people with the capability of becoming pregnant reported cannabis use. And um, fortunately, only about half of those uh, continue to use during pregnancy. And we know this rate did go down in 20, um, from 2017 to 2018, from seven to uh, less than 5%. So some disturbing trends in overall use, um, but luckily the message is getting out to pregnant people that it's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, Some of the reasons that pregnant people use cannabis is for the treatment of uh, hyperemesis or just nausea and vomiting in pregnancy. Also, there's this perceived notion that because it is natural, it is safer um, than medications to treat nausea and vomiting. Thanks, Dr. Wright. And can you talk a little bit about uh, when cannabis use tends to be more common uh, during pregnancy and potentially some people may perceive it as perhaps uh, less harmful than tobacco. Yeah, we definitely see it most in the first trimester, um, especially before uh, people know they're pregnant. Um, Given that 50% of the pregnancies in this country are unplanned, it's not um, unusual given, you know, how high the cannabis use, especially among young people, 18 to 24 is. Um, And that's when the um, unplanned pregnancy rates are highest also. You know, Patients think it is uh, safer than tobacco because they're not as inhaling as often, you know, they're not smoking as often as they would with tobacco. But um, unfortunately, the, the literature does not support that. 
Thanks for that information. And for a physician who has a patient who is pregnant or is considering becoming pregnant, what recommendations can you share for counseling and screening? Thank you for asking that. I think the most important thing is to screen all patients for substance use during pregnancy using a validated screening test such as the TAPS 1 and 2 or the 4Ps Plus or CERP-P. There's a variety of tests out there. Um, the important thing is to do it um, if with a verbal screening in a non-judgmental manner, not relying on urine toxicology, which is not a good screening test at all. Then following it up with counseling that is evidence-based, um, really talking about the risks, not just the risks of you know, child welfare involvement, but the, the risk to the pregnancy itself in, again, a non-judgmental way, but really giving the, the evidence behind why we don't recommend cannabis use in pregnancy, including some um, possible developmental effects. Um, anytime the brain is um, developing rapidly, uh, we know you know, extrapolating from data around uh, adolescent cannabis use that um, it can be very harmful and um, the brain is developing very rapidly in utero. So between 17 and 19 weeks is probably one of the most harmful times to to ingest cannabis and the, um, just because of the THC effects on the developing brain. Thanks for that information and sharing your experience with implementing screening programs. We know that can be a challenge. Medicine doesn't stand still, and neither do we. AMA members don't just keep up with medicine, they shape its future. Help move medicine, join the movement. Visit ama-assn.org slash movingmedicine. Uh, what are some of the effects of prenatal exposure that we know, uh, and why should physicians be concerned if a patient who is pregnant or thinking of becoming pregnant uses cannabis products? Um, so the um, associations that have been shown during studies is in association with um, low birth weight, some preterm uh, delivery, um, and then other effects from um, inhaling. There's few studies that have shown an increased risk of attention deficit and also um, decreased executive functioning. Fortunately, they're not um, great studies as far as they're retrospective and not controlling from other, you know, such as genetic issues, such as maternal uh, ADHD and other maternal uh, characteristics. Um, but that's the best information we have. Dr. Wright, thank you for that information. And follow up, are there any risks of cannabis exposure during the postpartum period or in infancy? Yeah, especially if um, you know patients are breastfeeding, we know that it is can uh, is passed into the um, breast milk um, and uh, can concentrate there, um, and it concentrates in fat tissues also. Um, the levels. Um, are variable and it, it just depends on when the last use was and cr the chronicity of use. Um, again, because the neonatal brain is developing very rapidly, exposure to THC during this time is, is not recommended. In addition, any environmental um, exposures um, from uh, cannabis use in the home, you know, in, if it's uh, smoked versus ingested um, could also uh, affect the infant. Um, so in general, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology and the American College of Pediatricians recommend um, to stop using cannabis while breastfeeding, um, but still encouraging breastfeeding for all people. It seems like a lot of the information we have is both scientific, but also in development. And so we're learning more and more about the use of cannabis during pregnancy and in the postpartum period. We certainly want to thank you for your knowledge and experience on cannabis use in pregnancy. Do you want to share a couple take-home points for our audience that you'd like them to be familiar with? Yeah, just that, you know, just because something is natural doesn't mean that it's safe. Um, that there's um, a plant outside my house, uh, oleander, that is beautiful and very natural and very poisonous. Um, and so, um, and just because something is a medicine doesn't mean that um, it can be good for everybody. It, there, it's some interesting studies that were done about dispensary advice and just 
trying to get people, encourage people to use uh, cannabis to prevent the nausea and vomit or to treat the nausea and vomiting. One person said, um, well, it's an edible. It goes through your digestive tract so the baby won't be affected. So the, you have people like that giving advice. Um, so um, I would give the advice to listen to your doctors and for doctors to give good medically sound advice. Dr. I thank you for spending the time with us uh, today on this topic. Your expertise and knowledge are really very welcome uh, in this uh, particular podcast. Thank you for having me. Don't miss the next episode in this series. Be sure to subscribe to Moving Medicine on your favorite podcast platform. This content is for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute medical or legal advice. The viewpoints expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and do not reflect the views and policies of the AMA unless otherwise indicated. And this has been Moving Medicine. Thanks for listening.